My name is Dr. Hatem El Aishi. I'm a professor of rheumatology at Cairo University and a consultant rheumatologist at Kepler Clinics in Cairo. I will talk to you today about the eight most important things you need to know about gout and uric acid. What we will start with is uh, a quick review of what, of what most people know about gout, which is actually most of it is incorrect. And then we will go for the eight pieces of information that I'm here to tell you, which, which is uh, number one, high uric acid is, is one thing and gout is something else. What is the story of uric acid and the high uric acid? What is the story of gout? How to manage high uric acid? How to manage gout? Gout medications are worse and have more side effects than gout itself. What to eat? And the relationship between uric acid and heart disease, if any. So what most people know about gout? Most people know about gout that gout is salts. It's excess salts in the body. How is it diagnosed? This is not the medical fact. So this is only what people think and most of it is not accurate and not correct. I'm here to correct it actually. How is it diagnosed? A blood test. You do a blood test and it tells you that you have gout. And this is not correct of course. The name of the gout test in labs is serum uric acid or uric acid or SUA. What, whichever you choose. The, the three are applicable or available at the labs. The normal serum uric acid is between 2 to 7 milligrams per deciliter. What are the symptoms of gout? A reminder, this is what people think. Accurate, info accurate correct information will follow. What people think the symptoms of gout are, it's one of four. It's either you have nothing, you don't have to have symptoms, just a lab test. If you, if you do the lab test and you have high uric acid, then you have gout. This is wrong. It's not an accurate information. It's wrong. Number two, if you have aches in your body, any aches, wherever, back pain, neck pain, knee pain, wrist pain, anywhere pain, and you have a lab test that shows you have high uric acid, then you have gout. That's not correct. Another thing, and this is so common, so many people believe in this all over the world. If you have heel pain, people always tell you, oh, I have heel pain, maybe this is soles. Maybe I have gout. That's not true. Heel pain has got nothing to do with the diagnosis of gout. Even if you have high uric acid, the heel pain is not related to the high uric acid if you have heel pain and high uric acid together. So this is also a misconception, a very common one. Okay, another one is if you have a severe arthritis, a pain, swelling, severe swelling and pain in one of the feet joints for one week or ten days, that then resolves, uh, sl resolves and you're completely normal after that, this is a gout. Yes, this is gout. This is the only piece of information that is correct so far about how what people know about gout. So, when people uh, socialize and sit together and talk, you find someone telling the other, I had heel pain, went to the doctor, had the lab test, told me it's gout. There's nothing like that. Nothing like you have heel pain and the doctor tells you it's gut. It's not, it's not scientific, it's not accurate, it's not correct. I have joint pains all over, I did lab tests to check for gut. If you have joint pains all over, please don't check for gut. It's not, it's not relevant. So what most people know about gut is all wrong information with the exception of this piece of information. A gouty attack is severe pain and swelling is in one of the feet joints at least initially. Maybe later it will affect other joints also. So now we start. What are the eight most important pieces of inf information, the most important things you need to, to know about gout and uric acid? Number one, high uric acid in the blood is one thing and diagnosis of gout is something else. If you eat a lot, if you, if you love food and you're eating a lot, I eat a lot is something, I will be fat is something else. When you eat a lot, you might get fat and you might not. Some people eat a lot and they don't get fat. What else? Today the temperature is high. It's hot today. I will get a heat stroke. No, that's not true. Okay. Today the, today the weather is hot. The temperature is high. This is something and getting a heat stroke is something else. With the temperature, when the weather is hot, some people suffer and get a heat stroke. Others are just fine. It's exactly the same. When, see, when the uric acid in the blood goes high, 
Some people might get gout, others will not get gout. So what's the difference between gout and serum uric acid so far? We'll build, we are building more pieces of information as we, as we go through those slides. So the difference is serum uric acid is just a lab test. It's just a figure, just a figure, no more. Gout is a disease. It's a type of arthritis that happens in some of those people who have high uric acid in the blood. So you need to have a high uric acid and then maybe it will get you gout later on, as we will see how. The conclusion of the first piece of information is, there's nothing like I have gout because I have a positive gout blood test. Rather, I, have, I had a lab test that shows I have a high uric acid in the blood. This does not necessarily mean I have gout. Okay, so number two, what is serum uric acid? And what is high uric acid? What is the story of uric acid? We need to know more about it. Instead of always, I have high uric acid, I want to get it done. What is uric acid? Maybe there's something good about it. We eat, we move, we have metabolic processes going on in your body at every moment. Those metabolic processes, they produce uric acid. And they, they produce a lot of substances, and one of them is uric acid. Normally, this uric acid that is produced Part of it will stay in the blood in a, in a normal range between 2 to 7 milligrams per deciliter. And it's also useful. It's not, it's not bad. Otherwise, you would, have, you, had, you would have been getting rid of all of it. But you need some uric acid in the blood. And the remainder and the excess, what is excess of this range, the uric, it will be excreted by the kidneys. So, this is the first part of number two. What is uric acid? This is uric acid. It, it's the result of, met, of normal metabolism in your body. What is high uric acid? High uric acid is uric acid levels that are greater than 7 milligrams per deciliter. Uric acid levels above 7 milligrams per deciliter. Why would uric acid levels go up? Why would they go high? For many com common conditions, there are so many conditions that, are, that, that we see in our every me medical conditions, I mean, that can cause uric acid to go up being overweight or being obese, having high cholesterol, high blood cholesterol, having high blood pressure, having kidney impairment, renal impairment. Some medications can cause the uric acid to go up and other reasons, but we are concentrate here on the more common reasons that, are, that many lay people are familiar with. So let's concentrate on those three. The be, being overweight, the high blood pressure and the high cholesterol. If you, randomly, if you randomly get 100 people walking in the street, you expect how many of them will have high cholesterol, being overweight, or have a high creatinine? No less than 20, I guess. No less than 20. What I mean to say, there is really a likely chance you may find people with high uric acid in the blood just in the if you go randomly look for them in the general population. Most of them are actually men. It happens in women over 60s and over 70s, which is not our topic today. What are the complications of high uric acid? So, actually there are not few people with high uric acid around here. So, what are the complications of high uric acid in the blood? In most instances, virtually nothing. High uric acid in itself will not cause any problems. So, if in most instances it's nothing, what about the few persons who are left, what could happen to them? It could be a disease called gout that affects the joints or stones that affect the kidneys and ureters. This is what the uric acid can cause. So what is the story of gout then? So what is the story of gout then? The story of gout. Let us start to make the story of gout easy. Let us start with a glass of water and a spoon of sugar. You get a spoon of sugar and you dissolve it in a glass of water and it dissolves. And you get another one, another spoon of sugar and it dissolves. And another one and another one and you keep getting another and another. In the end, no more sugar is dissolving in the water. You reach a stage of saturation. The water is drowned in sugar. It, it has no more place for sugar. So the excess sugar will deposit at the bottom of the glass of water. Let's go to our body now. This is our body, this is the serum uric acid. 
the normal uric acid, 2 to 7 milligrams per deciliter. If for any reason our uric acid goes higher than 7, this is the, si this is the situation. It's higher than 7 now, more than 7. So this is the start of the state of supersaturation. This is the red, I'm ready now to deposit. The uric acid is ready to deposit, just like the, the sugar was ready to deposit at the bottom of the glass. It's a stage of supersaturation. Ready, it's only readiness, it did not deposit. And it takes 10 to 20 years, and after 10 to, such a long time, and after 10 to 20 years, maybe, not surely, not that, maybe, uric acid salts might deposit in the tissues. If they deposit in the tissues, where do they deposit? They, they love three types of tissues. They love the joints. They love the joints in general, but mostly they love the feet joints. The big toe, the mid-tarsal, which are the joints of the middle of the foot, the ankle, they love those joints especially. Or in the soft tissues, like here, this is one of the common tissues that they like. Or in the, t or in the, in the urinary tract, in the kidney, ureter, urethra, they love those three places to deposit. The mere deposition of uric acid salts does not mean disease. It's only benign deposition. And it can stay as such for many years without any, any complications. So, after deposition, they deposited. What might happen next? Gout might happen and might not. You might get gout. They are only deposited. It doesn't mean that they make gout. They might get gout. So what is gout? Gout is high uric acid in the blood and you have this high uric acid in a state of supersaturation and it takes many years and this gout starts to deposit after many years it deposits in some of the in the joints in in tissues one of them is the joints and in the end when it deposits only 20 percent of those people who have a deposition of uric acid in only 20 percent the joint disease we call gout might happen so you have four things to happen what are the symptoms of gout the symptoms of gout the start of gout is like this an attack of really severe pain, swelling, redness, mostly of one of the foot joints, mostly the, the big toe, mostly the big toe. It loves the big toe for a start. Here's the big toe, here's the ankle, the mid tarsal joints, the middle of the foot can be the knee, but mostly it loves the big toe when it starts. The, this inflammation can be pretty aggressive and the swelling is really impressive that the skin itself, it peels. Uh, at, at the resolution of the, of the attack. Remember, only in 20% of those who have high uric acid in the blood will the arthritis called gout occur. So, if you tell me that you have back pain, you have, you have uh, neck pain, you have heel pain and the uric acid was high, now it's clear to you that this is not related to the diagnosis of gout. You have back pain, this is one thing, and you have high uric acid, this is another thing. You have two things separate and not related to each other. So heel pain, heel pain and, I'm repeating, and I'm repeating it again, heel pain has got nothing to do with gout or anything that lay pe people refer to as excess salts. Why gout happened now? Why in only 20%? It deposited in, in tissues and it's been there for some time and it could have done nothing. Why some, of, why some people get gout? Why in those 20%? You see, the high uric acid in the blood, after many years, it deposited, and in only 20% it made that gout. Those 20%, they were waiting for a push. Someone to push them to get gout. And what is that push? The push is one of several things. It could be some medications. Like someone who's newly diagnosed with hypertension, this is the most common scenario, you're newly diagnosed with high blood pressure and your doctor prescribed diuretics. So in diuretics, they give you the push. You get the first attack only one week after you start the, the antihypertensive medication. That doesn't mean that you, that you go to stop your blood pressure medication. It's your doctor who will prescribe or stop the medication. I'm just, I'm just giving you information, that's all. Some foods can give you the push. If this joint is previously injured or has osteoarthritis, following a surgery, you do a surgery not related to your joints, uh, you have a, an open heart, 
uh, surgery and after a few days you get a gouty attack or starvation, dehydration, all those are likely pushes that push you to get your first attack of gout, to get you an attack of gout. What then? You got an attack of gout. Okay, this slide will be re really crowded in, in one minute, but we will take it step by step. This is the start of gout. This guy got his first attack of gout. He has pain and swelling in th and this is the first attack, one joint only, say the big toe. And it takes one week, then there's less pain. But that week was really, this guy really suffered. It was really severe pain. After one week, there's less pain. And after two more days, there's no more pain. Look at that. Without any treatment to decrease the uric acid, maybe that guy, he will get no more attacks ever in his life. Or maybe after one or two years or more, maybe he goes for the second attack. So he gets pain and swelling again, and he's sad again, as you see, and he has the second attack, also one joint only. Maybe it's the same big toe, maybe it's the other big toe, maybe it's one of the fe other feet joints. So it takes one week, and after one week there's less pain, and in another two days, no more pain. Just the same scenario like the first attack that happened one or two years ago. Look at that. Without any treatment again, to decrease uric acid, maybe he gets no more attacks, as if it's two attacks in his lifetime. Or within month or month, several months or a year, you see, the last time it was one or two years or more, now it's within month or one year, he goes for a third attack. This time maybe it's one joint or more. It's becoming troublesome now, more joints, but it's only one attack per year or per two years. Then more than a week, it's not only one week, it's more than a week, and then you get no more pain. In some persons, it becomes really more troublesome. You have a more frequency of attacks, you have more than one pain in one attack, you have more than one joint in an attack, and you have longer and longer duration of pain. So it's as if, Doc, I get a pain in one of my feet joints every six to weeks to eight weeks. That's too much. And the pain lasts for three weeks. So it's turning into something really troublesome. The first attack was not. It was one week and it was over. And maybe over forever. The second week, the second attack was not so troublesome. Maybe it was the second and it was over for life. But now it's becoming troublesome. And this, as we will see later, it will affect our decisions in how we treat. So, number four. Let's see what we do with a high uric acid patient first and then we see what we do with a gouty patient. 